Hey, everyone. Welcome to Locked on Lakers for Tuesday. Brian Kamenetsky, Andy Kamenetsky, Andy LeBron James put on a huge show Monday night in Cleveland. Have the Lakers done enough over the last three games to inject some hope into the end of the season? That's next on Locked on Lakers. You are Locked on Lakers. Your daily Los Angeles Lakers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks to everybody for making Locked On Lakers the first listen you have every day, Monday through Friday, sometimes Saturdays and Sundays. We get this up bright and early, uh, as early as we can. And uh, make another Locked On podcast your second listen, Andy. Um, You and everyone else, but only after making us your first. Um, So there are nights, Andy, where the Lakers really do feel like that, that significant other that you dated in college or high school or that you knew weren't good for you, but you know, they, they really didn't bring out your best side, but man alive, if they just weren't able sometimes to get their hooks into you and bring you back in and you can't quite get away, even though, you know, it's not healthy. That Andy is uh Monday night's one thirty one one twenty win over the, uh, uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers quite a show. The, I think the most joyful game the Lakers have played all year, a phenomenal LeBron performance, and I don't know. Uh, do we have hope again? Are we back to having hope, Andy? To quote Al, uh, to quote Al Pacino in The Godfather 3, Michael Corleone, just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. Yeah. That's what they do, man. It's, that's what they're doing right now. I'm telling you, I am telling you right now, I sensed – on Lakers Twitter, you and I at Cam Brothers, a very active, vital part of Lakers Twitter. Some, Brian, many people say we invented Lakers Twitter. I, 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 I think we did. Um, we are foundational. I yes. think it's the word you're looking for. Yes. A many cornerstone. It. And because of that, we have our finger on the pulse of Lakers Twitter. And dare I say, Brian, I sensed excitement. I, I sensed some excitement after this game because... because to make no mistake... Lakers Twitter is a deeply cynical and dark place <laughs> this year. Yeah, um, and not without reason. I, but, I, I, absolutely. But we will get into, obviously, all the specifics of this game. Like you mentioned, it was just LeBron doing straight-up theater in this game. Oh. He was just phenomenal. Russell Westbrook, really nice night for him. DJ Augustine, 20 points off the bench, did not miss a shot, 6 of 6 from behind the arc. But if you look at the last Lakers never three, never lose when DJ Augustine hits all six of his three point attempts. If you look at the last three games, save a really bad, disappointing fourth quarter against the Wizards, the Lakers have legitimately played better. They've beaten two the last three games, two of them were against good teams. Yes. All on the road. Toronto and Cleveland are good teams. They beat them both. And in Toronto, you know, they had to go into overtime. They had to slug that thing out. And then this game against Cleveland, you know, they were down the first quarter, but not, you know, not anything really bad. Yeah, I want to get I want to get to that. So, but yeah, but the, because I think that's but critical. As the game went along, Brian, they controlled it. The more this game went on, the more the Lakers actually controlled it again against a quality opponent in their house. It's look. Exactly. <laughs> I, I like I you you go into Michael Corleone. My my pop culture moment, like thinking about this team, was Shawshank Redemption. You know, when Tim Robbins and uh, and Morgan Freeman are arguing about whether or not hope is a good thing to have in prison. Um, you know, and Red says no, and Andy Dufresne says yes. Like I feel like this is one of those moments where you have to figure out: Are you an Andy Dufresne or are you a Red? Well, Brian, you can actually be both because in the end. Andy and Red ended up together right. on the outside. And, and they both escaped prison, which is also a good... Because right now it feels like... This season has felt very prison-like for Lakers fans. Mm. And it's just... Look, when you the, the formula here, as we've discussed, and you just haven't been able to get to it, is dominant Anthony Davis. We presume still that at some point before the play-in game, he will be back. 
Um, and LeBron James doing the sort of things that he did on on Monday where he was transcendent. 38 points, 11 rebounds, 12 assists. Um, he only had three turnovers. He had a block. He had a steal. And, you know, the poster dunk on Kevin Love. And, you know, it was, it was one of these incredible LeBron James nights that we've that, had a lot of dunk, over the Brian, course of the year. That dunk was so ridiculous. LeBron actually apologized to Kevin Love after the game. Because they're buddies. Because, he didn't want to put him on a poster. Yeah, he's like, I hope I'm still invited to the guy's wedding. He's like, I, I would love to take those two points back. We still win by nine. He's like, I, I he's like, I took no joy from doing that to Kevin Love. Like, this is how you know these guys are from another planet and whatever. Like, if I just to, for the opportunity to do that one time. There is literally nobody on this planet that I wouldn't posterize. Mom, you know, <laughs> Mother Teresa. I mean, I don't care who it is. I am put if I could put my head above the rim like that, I am putting you on a poster just so I can feel what that's like. Sorry, mom. You know, you could see to the evolution of Kevin Love going from okay, I'm gonna try to challenge this to oh hell no. Uh, and absolutely like flipping not. And then because they can't get out of the way fast enough. So um you know, you have this formula and then, you know, competent play from like, this is what in theory, before we get to sort of the specifics of it and, and, you know, the, the happiness, the joy factor, which I think makes a difference in all this stuff, because psych psychologically, the Lakers have been in such a bad place this year. Any shift in that is legitimately important. Um, like this was kind of a peek into the formula. LeBron plays like LeBron. Russ gives you a good performance, 20 points, 11 assists, one turnover. Um, you know, so so 20 points on 14 field goal, uh, field goal attempts. And then you get something from someone else. Monday it was DJ Augustine. Some nights it's been Malik Monk. Sometimes Austin Reeves gives you, you know, 16. Sometimes Carmelo Anthony gives you 20. But it's that's Wenyan the formula. Gabriel against Toronto. Yes, seven of seven from the floor. It's like is it something I would rely on for them to even get out of the play-in? No, but it's just enough because you have LeBron, you theoretically have AD, and God damn, these guys just give you some hope. But you know what? I'm going to enjoy it for a night. I yeah. am. Look, here's the thing. If you want to allow yourself, as a Laker fan, to drink this in a little bit, allow yourself to get excited, you know what? Do it. Because here's the thing. A, if you happen to be right, you deserve it. Because you've ridden this thing out. You deserve the reward. I, I would argue more than the Lakers deserve the award. Because you, as a fan, have probably spent more efforting and time <laughs> in your process with this than the Lakers often have. The Lakers often half-ass their way through this thing. You, as fans, didn't. If anybody earned it, it's the fans. So, if you happen to be right, great. If... This is just, uh, to quote train spotting, a blip in an otherwise steady <laughs> downward trajectory. Guess what? It's not going to take that much out of you to fall right back to where. Right. You when do they work. play again? Is it Wednesday? They play Wednesday against the Sixers right, at home. You can yeah. you can downshift right back into exactly. cynicism. It will the, not take. This it will is not going to be. I can promise you, this is not going to be whiplash. So allow yourself to have some fun with it. Allow yourself a little bit of delete, uh, belief. And like you said, Brian, think of it as that X that you want to believe in, but you know I you shouldn't. I, I feel like I can, if, you know, I can just change her. I can, I, if, if she stays with me, I can save her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, know, you know, that kind of, or she can say, you know, if, you, <laughs> if you I know, stay with Westbrook, <laughs> I can change him. <laughs> I can change him. I can make I can make it work. Um, but like you know, I, I, we'll we'll get to this before we get to the uh, we'll do the uh, some of the, the the specifics about the game uh, and the lineups um, as the show goes along. But the last thing on this, you know, we're talking about Lakers fans enjoying this and take psychologically. The Lakers do save again that f terrible fourth quarter. They were having fun on on Monday with belief that there was going to be a payoff for it like they you know they were playing in a way that made them i think where they felt like they they could be a they could get a reward they got a reward with playing with energy and some some life in toronto i'm not saying it's gonna be enough to 
turn this ship around because they have structural problems and roster problems and talent problems and all this stuff. <laughs> they had ship problems. They, they the whole <laughs> boat is problematic. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like the minnow. <laughs> <laughs> it's somewhere between like Titanic, the minnow, that raft that Tom Hanks was riding around on and cast away. Like just, uh, the whole. <laughs> it's, 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 no, the vessel is not seaworthy. <laughs> I think yes, we've this, we have, we have proven. this is not Logan Roy's yacht in succession. No, 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 no. no. But, um, you know, I think this is a point that you've made a lot. Like, to whatever degree the Lakers can achieve something this season, they have to be able to get out of the dark place and into a place where it seems like they're enjoying basketball. And Monday, it looked like they were actually enjoying the game, and there was a tangible result. Now, it's much easier to enjoy it when all that good stuff is happening. But you could argue the good stuff, Andy, won't happen unless you're actually feeling that joy. Uh, let's get into some of the specifics of the game itself and some really interesting observations about who was on the floor when all the good things were happening, because it's not necessarily a pretty story for Rob Palenka. We'll do that next. Locked on Lakers brought to you by Bet Online. It's that time of year again. College basketball, it is in full swing, the big old tournament. And there have been surprises. There have been upsets. Sister Jean is still with us. So you're in There's the something called a St. Peter's. They're, I had no idea, like literally no They're the idea. peacocks, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> like, that sounds so... Strutting around up. like themselves. <laughs> That's so... I mean, that sounds so made up. But for all the latest odds, contests, and player props, BetOnline.net... Peacocks is the name of a team that you have when you just don't think you're going to be very good at sports. Or like <laughs> you, are the, care. you are the snootiest <laughs> private school ever. <laughs> BetOnline.net, the number one source for all your sport betting needs and info. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your continued source for all your sporting wagering information needs live betting and favorite vegas casino games you know stuff like craps and uh, roulette multi-handed blackjack all sorts of stuff it's a, you got a lot of options on betonline.net so head to the website today use your mobile device learn about the trends and action bet online where the game starts best impression of a peacock ever Anyway, <laughs> Lockdown Lakers is also brought to you by Athletic Greens. Um, so I started using Athletic Greens, AG1 specifically, because I, three kids, you know, I, I both of us actually eat reasonably well, but both of us have really inconsistent schedules. But, you know, so it's like I, what, I, what I'm really looking for are ways to get nutrition into my diet every day, whether I can kind of do it with food or not. And so better gut health, more energy, uh, you know, beef up my immune system. What I've done with that is... Athletic Greens, AG1, you're absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole foods, sourced superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens to help you start your day right. It's a special blend of ingredients that supports all of that stuff, your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, aging, all of it uh, into, into one very easy to, to drink in the morning, tastes pretty good. It's got like this little hint of like tropical fruit in it. It's pretty good. So it's one scoop in a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and, uh, supplements to look out for your health. Make it easy. Athletic Greens is going to give you one free, uh, a free one year supply, excuse me, of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com backslash NBA network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com backslash NBA network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Um, all right. So uh, we have beaten this drum, Andy, hard over the last couple of weeks. When the Lakers give up these horrible first quarters, um, the problem isn't just defense, it's offense. And on Monday night, they gave up 35 points to Cleveland. That's not a great quarter defensively. But you know what? They were only down by seven because they scored 28 points themselves. And when you're not out of it, when you're down by seven as opposed to 17 to finish the first quarter, that makes a really big difference. Look, it is so hard to play really any sport when you can't score. Like there's always that saying defense wins championships. And it is true. But as I like to say, the caveat is assuming you can also score because unless your defense is just like Detroit Pistons in 2004, you know, the, the Baltimore Ravens of Ray Lewis and Ed Reed, like, that level of defense, 
it's too difficult at this level to do this stuff without being able to score consistently. It is also just, as you mentioned, psychologically, it's just, it's draining. It's way worse than not being able to get stops. Well, not scoring is fun. Takes, it, it, way more fun. Yes. Defense sucks. Yeah. I like mean, you can you, take enjoyment in it, but it really, right. it's not fun. No, unless you're like a psycho, like, you know, Ron Artest, Tony Allen, Patrick Beverly, Ben Wallace, know, Rodman. Yeah, Ben Wallace. Like, you know, there's all these guys are built a little bit. We, we love Ron. All, we covered Ron for years. They're all a little weird. <laughs> yeah. But like def, defense is not nearly as much fun as offense. And the the inability to score makes it feel like your defense that isn't as much fun is not paying off in any tangible way. Well, so look, why the hell are we doing this? When when was the last time you saw? I mean, it's sort of like the functional equivalent of chicks dig the long ball. Like mm -hmm. nobody ever said, like, oh my god, did you see the way the guy hedged on that screen? Oh, that is so hot. <laughs> you know, it's like, did you see? Did, oh my god! Did, I mean, I mean, he is so, he's really cute. And did you see his drop coverage? I mean, it was insane. I love him. Like that never happened. They talk about three point shooting and scoring. Like, yeah, I just they, they were. The difference in this game and their ability to make that sort of standard Lakers comeback that, you know, to their credit, as lousy as this season has been, they seem to put in the effort to try to come back from 28 down, you know, every time they do it, which is far too often. When you can actually make up that difference in two or three or four or five possessions, as they did in the second quarter, when suddenly they started hitting shots, the Lakers missed, I think, five corner threes in the first quarter. And I realize the Lakers aren't a good shooting team, but that's bad even for them. And but you know, a couple shots start to fall. DJ Augustine hits a couple, whatever. And now you're all you're tied all of a sudden. Now it's not, hey, great, 12 to 3 run, and we're now we're within eight. You make that run now, it's okay, we're winning. That is a massive difference. And so the ability to score is, you know, ultimately what is going to sustain this team. Because they're just not built to be good defensively. They can no, be as I mean, good as they can try to be, but they're not going to be good. No, I mean, may, you hope that once AD is back, whenever it is, I mean, he he at least ups your potential defensively, but this period where they're in right now, it, it's just they they have to have good offense because the, there's a ceiling on the defense. But you, you know, you're talking about rewards, for example. Pelicans lost tonight, so the Lakers mm -hmm. are now back up one game over them. And in terms of that fun factor, the last three games, like we mentioned, the Lakers have been better. It's also come at a time where Westbrook has shot well and has been much more productive. These are not unrelated matters, Brian. Like, he is looking more these last few games like the guy that they thought was worth trading for in the first place. And I, like, that in their mind justifies what they envisioned with this. And I thought it was interesting, too, like, after the game, Russ was in a really good mood, and it was in part because, it, and this was adorable, he was wearing this sweater with a design that his son drew for him, like his four-year-old son. It's like a you know, like stick figure of him and his dad under the sunshine. And I'm he glad put it was it his four-year-old kid, because if it was his 14-year-old kid, I'm not going to be <laughs> impressed with that artwork. Uh, at that point, you just say it's really good, and you, and you frame it in the house in a room where nobody can see it. But... Russ was in a good mood about that. He made sure that the camera was framed in a way that you could see the, the sweater. But he talked afterwards about how, you know, he lives for adversity and the outside noise. And there's nothing better in his mind than shutting up the doubters and making them be quiet. And Russ is feeling himself right now. And that's great. Like, even, even if he is putting himself on a pedestal that's too high, so be it, as long as he's coachable, as long as he's adaptable, as long as he's doing all this stuff in a team scheme, great. Because like they need good mood Russ, not bad mood Russ. There's, I, I you want to talk about whether or not the swagger is earned, whether he's played well enough over the last few games to, to feel like that's deserved and whatever. Okay, that's, a, that's a debate we can all have. But I think you are 100% right that it doesn't matter. The point isn't whether or not Russ ought to be feeling as good as he does about himself. You know, 20 points against Cleveland, 22, uh, pretty efficient 22. It should be added against uh, Washington, 22 against Toronto. I don't care. Plus if it's that totally... big shot that sent him into overtime. Yeah. 
I don't care if it's false bravado, undeserved. The only Russ that's going to be able to help them is Swagger Russ. <laughs> you know, I mean, that that's the one that they need. And, he just can't be obstinate, Russ. <laughs> right. Well, but also, you know, like he's not going to play well if he feels like he is being threatened and not, you know, I don't mean like threatened in the way like, you know, we had that conversation about what, what fans were saying, but like just this sort of defensive guy who doesn't feel good about himself, doesn't have confidence in his game, doesn't have belief in his own Russness um, and whatever. And I, I, I get this isn't a referendum on the trade. It still a, was a terrible idea and they shouldn't have done it. But if it's going to succeed, Westbrook has to be that guy with the arrogance and the confidence and all of that stuff um, to be the player that the Lakers think he can be. It's still going to be a weird fit, um, and it's still not going to be perfect. But um, that's the best version of Westbrook that they can hope for. Um, and obviously, if they want to get out of the play-in game, if they want to be the nine seed to play at least a game at home, if they want to win two games in a row just to get into the playoffs, to go play the Phoenix Suns, who look <laughs> unbeatable right now. Like, all of this stuff needs to go right. Um, and, you know, arguing about whether or not Westbrook deserves to feel this way is really counterproductive. Yeah, it's it's, it's beside the point. But But yeah. he's feeling good. Russ is really feeling good right now, and he should feel good because he's playing – much better. And, and I do think that that mood, you know, from a guy like him is contagious. And, you know, there were other guys too, just like over the course of this game, like Stanley Johnson, you know, his, his stats won't jump out at you, but he had a few really good sequences. He set up LeBron on it. Just an he absolutely some nice passes, very nice little pocket he, passes and he, stuff like it's, that. He, he actually, it's funny. He's not a playmaker. And I was talking about this a little bit with a couple people on Twitter. Like it's hard to figure out exactly who Stanley Johnson is as a player because he's got a decent amount of skills like at you know like a 5 or a 6 on a scale of 1 to 10 but nothing that he really does as a 10 he's super athletic but his position i think isn't definable in a way that you know exactly what to do with it he's i think actually a pretty smart player but he's not skilled enough in some ways that i think he can pay off the smarts you know what I mean? Like he's sort yeah, of it's, difficult to figure really, out what to do. Yes, with. which is why he's on his like eighth team. <laughs> right. <laughs> but there, but you feel like like nights like this one where you had 12 points, three rebounds, an assist, three steals, you're like, okay, th there's something there. This, you know, this is a great seg into the next topic for the show tonight because Stanley Johnson was part of a lineup that the Lakers put out today that was, to say the least, very different than I think what people would have expected at the beginning of the year. Um, so the implications of that are pretty interesting, and we'll talk about it next. Locked on Lakers brought to you by rockauto.com. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models out there, it is impossible to stock all the parts you need in a traditional chain storefront. And look, why would you spend 30%, 50%, 100% more on the exact same auto parts at a chain store or new car dealership anyway, you fool? You mark, you sucker. Like, you can get it for way less. Why am I yelling at people? You, But you can get it. It just upsets me because you can get it for way less at rockauto.com. For example, Honda Odyssey fuel pump, it's 353 bucks, usually from a chain store, only 216 from rockauto.com. They're a family business. They've been serving auto park customers online for 20 years. So whether it's for a classic or a daily driver, get everything you need, few easy clicks delivered directly to your door. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or your truck, but make sure to write locked on in the how, how did you hear about us box so they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. So uh, the Lakers tonight fielded a lineup that mostly consisted of LeBron, 41 mm -hmm. minutes, Russell Westbrook, 35 minutes, uh, and then in descending order, Wenyan Gabriel played 32, Austin Reeves played 29, uh, Stanley Johnson played 23, DJ Augustine 26, uh, then you get to Malik Monk at 22, Dwight at 12, uh, Mello played 14, and Avery Bradley a token 6. To say the least, Andy, this is not the lineup that you would have expected because most of these people were not on the team <laughs> when, when camp broke. So it's very gotta... difficult to predict. Like, you know, you and I said, did never we're, we're not saying in October. And, you know, I wonder how much Wending, Wending Gabriel is going to play because he wasn't on the team. Um, 
on the one hand, kudos, I guess, to the Lakers for finding Stanley Johnson and Wendy and Gabriel and giving Austin Reeves a chance and all that stuff. On the other hand, that is a scathing indictment of the work that he did to build this roster that none of the players that they expected to play are playing. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and, you know, even the guys that are playing right now, you know, as you mentioned before, the the degrees of confidence that you have in them, you know, it wanes up and down. And look, to be fair to the front office, THT was not available tonight, still dealing with that ankle. Mm -hmm. You know, AD's not there and, and Kendrick Nunn, you know, that whole situation, everybody knows Right, but that should now. mean... You know, Kent Bazemore is playing, or Wayne Ellington sure, is playing, or sure. Avery Bradley is playing, or Dwight right. Howard uh, all, is playing. Right. All I meant if, is if those three guys were available, three of the other folks that you mentioned might not be on the court at all because there's only so many guys you're going to play in the first mm -hmm. place. Either way, though, it like you said, it does speak to just what they set out to do at the beginning of the season, what you know, a lot of people thought beyond beyond the Rust deal. You know, beyond you know whether or not Westbrook fits with this team, whether it was necessary, all that stuff. Overall roster construction. I mean, I I have been screaming for this team to get an honest to goodness small forward, like when they were actually good, when they won a championship. I was like, uh -huh. I don't understand how you managed to construct a team with no true three, and they still just don't seem to be all that into that in a in a era where. You know, wings seem to it's be uh, all the rage. The spinal tap amp, instead of it going to 11, it just skips three. It goes to one through five. It's just one, two, four, five. There's nothing else. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a guy, it's funny because guys like Stanley Johnson and Wenyan Gabriel, like they actually are kind of types that the Lakers had been looking for, like Austin Reeves in certain respects, who, you know, credit for earmarking him, but they did not expect him. He was not supposed to play. That's right. when you say he was their 17th guy. Right. You know, he is like a smaller version of the type of player that, again, they should be looking for, like an actual wing. You know, it's it's hopefully things that they can learn for this off season, because as we've discussed many times, they may have to approach this in similar ways as they did this off season. Yep. Like it or not like, because they're not going to have a ton of flexibility I'm gonna go regardless of what happens with Russ, right? You know, just the salary cap constrictions aren't going to be there or are, are going to prevent them from having that type of flexibility. So, Hopefully there are lessons learned, and if they manage to paper mache this thing well enough that they can actually get some momentum heading into the play-in, maybe actually get them somewhere in the playoffs, good for them. And I guess you could say good for them for being resourceful, but you would prefer to not put yourself in that position to begin with. I um, I I I think this is I, I look at this as very problematic because it's this is a a feature of the type of roster building that they've signed themselves up for where um, you I, I've said all year long to some degree I feel like this was a situation where the Lakers were going to have to throw some lineups against the wall and see what sticks not necessarily but they didn't think they signed NBA caliber players I'm sure and I thought they did as well as they could I, I thought Wayne Ellington would you know have the potential to contribute I thought Kent Bazemore would have the potential to contribute I thought you know, I did, wasn't so optimistic on Dwight and DJ, um, but, you know, or Avery Bradley <laughs> for that matter. Um, you know, Carmelo has been pretty good and, and all, but like, it's like when you throw all these things together, you figure half of them work out and you're good to go. I was optimistic Trevor Ariza would be able to give them 15 to 18 minutes a night. Like, okay. And the, but, the, but there was always the potential that they wouldn't. And, you know, you start, scraping around for guys like Stanley Johnson who played well on Monday and has had moments where he's been pretty good for the Lakers, but has also had moments where you could tell why he was out of the league. And Wenyan Gabriel is a guy who I suspect, particularly if you try to play him, you know, in a significant role over 82 games would, you know, there's a, a lot of potential that he, he, you'd get a diminishing return. Sure. And, you know, because as as I've noted, there's a reason these guys aren't in the league. And every once in a while, you see Gary Payton the third. You know, there was a second or third, uh, second. second, second. 
Um, I want to keep adding more Gary Paytons. Where like guy, you know, like a guy bounces around, bounces around, and finds like a perfect situation and seems to thrive. And you're like, how has that guy not been on an NBA roster for the last five years um, consistently? But most of the time, that doesn't happen. And you know, the Lakers are going to be in a situation where I think what they've learned from this year, at the very least, is if we're going to throw darts. Let's throw darts at younger players, at guys who have shown potential in the G League and need a chance and whatever it is, rather than relying too much on dudes in their 30s and and who may be a little bit overcooked in, in the league. <laughs> to be fair to the Lakers, I, I don't think it was necessarily as throw it against the wall, see if it sticks, in the sense that you know, they they had, I think, a pretty set rotation in their mind that was obviously the big three. And they had Kendrick Nunn earmarked to have a big role, which and they expected him to, you know, I don't know, play a game this season, which right. I think is reasonable. You know, they had an elevated sense for THT, which for now is a miss in terms of where they thought he'd be. But that was supposed to be a solidified role. And they were right on Mello and Monk. And, you know, like we talked about, Reeves is sort of this weird subcategory where they earmarked a good guy, but they did not predict him doing what he's doing right now. So in some respects, they, the only guy that I think they really had a definitive big role for that they just flat out missed was Kent Bazemore. Like, okay, because- but, but, but here's the thing, though, and I agree with you, but, but part of the problem here, too, is the, that you are hoping the context of successful with some of these guys, with Carmelo Anthony, for example, and even Malik Monk, is still successful with real limitations compared to right. higher level, um, more versatile players that are yeah, that sort sure. of NBA but, middle but, class. But those limitations were supposed to also be papered over in, in, I think, a pretty sizable way by Anthony Davis playing... More right, and than, Russell Westbrook being really good and, and right. all that. Absolutely. Like, right. I mean, some of the guys that didn't work out, like Dwight, DJ, Ariza, Ellington, Bazemore, you know, if you still count Rondo, like, I don't know how much they were necessarily counting on those guys to begin with as much as them being, you know, sort of like safety measures. Well, which, Trevor Reason was, I mean, we all thought he would start. So, I mean, they were. Right, you know, but, but I mean, that's, I remember that I, you're going to rely on to some degree. Right, they they were, but I always I always thought, and and Ariza is a weird thing because it's hard to know exactly what he would have done because it took so long for him to get on the court, and then for varying reasons of health and ineffectiveness, and then it's hard to judge it because AD wasn't there, LeBron hasn't been there sometimes, guys in and out, whatever. It's hard to know exactly how much he would have played in sort of the original. Right, but I mean, it's also this. this was not exactly a a a. a a, a scenario that was hard to envision. Oh, no, no. You know, Look, the idea that the reason wouldn't be healthy enough to Look, contribute. I, I want to make it clear, and I, I think people understand this, but just in case there's any ambiguity, I'm not defending the front office's approach on this. I'm just explaining what I think it was. I, I think they actually had this in their heads pretty set, as opposed to it being sort of haphazard oh, kind of figuring it out I, I, I don't again i don't mean it as haphazard i just mean there was gonna be a, and vogel talked about this a lot in the preseason they were gonna were, it was going to require a lot of 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 experimentation because so many there, there were not a lot of two-way options you know other than uh, than i guess Bazemore, right there was nobody who you would look at and say that guy is a two that's why thg it, was so important right. because in theory he was somebody who could be a two-way player and it the, was a lot of you have Wayne Ellington who you can put on the floor to shoot, but if you use him, then it's going to be harder to use this player over here because Wayne can't sure. defend this. Sure, that's what I mean. It's like they were going to have to, you know, just throw okay. a lot of stuff and experiment and figure out what worked. And they never got a chance to do it. But the fact that they never got a chance to do it was both somewhat predictable, but also um, is a a design. It, it exposes the design flaw of having so many one dimensional players. Okay, that that's fair. That's absolutely fair. Season started Friday. Absolutely. They're two and did. one. Two and one. Two, two and, and one, one could have e- could have actually easily been. Should have been. Three Should and have been. Um, And you mentioned this was an important win because uh, the Spurs won um, and Portland won and and uh, New Orleans lost. So, like, things are looking good in the standings. Um, I'm making plans for June. <laughs> That's right. Absolutely. Nothing stops this train. Nothing. Um, all right. We'll see everybody on Wednesday. Wednesday. All right.